Hey everyone, this is Megan with Able Cine, and I'm really excited today to be joined with cinematographer Tommy Maddox Upshaw. We're going to be discussing his use of the Sony Venice on season six of Empire. So thanks everyone for watching and thanks Tommy for being with me today. No problem. When you were doing the lighting test for Empire, so dark on set. Because right. you, you were really, you know, using the, the oh, light yeah. capabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do it now, like the story's gotten darker on Empire. It's to be in the last season, but yeah, it's like, how low can you go? And then the gaffer, Tom Burnett, he was like, he hadn't seen that before. He's like, whoa, what is, what is going on? And I was like, trust me, we're fine. And he still had to like get used to it because <laughs> it's super low light. And when yeah. you mess with LEDs, you know, you can roll it really down low and not roll the color temperature. And with that and this camera, you can fly like right at the deck and like really hold your image and all the brown skin tones and not be scared. Right. And barely see anything, you know, like this is really, and then you have no noise. And right. people try to, you know, somebody tried to talk to me, oh, this is like some weird, like gain build on 2500 with this camera. That's all it is. I was like, no, nah, I've seen this projected on a 35 foot screen. I've zoomed in and seen this thing. Color, episode after episode. There's no dancing in the black. I haven't seen it. And I'm looking at it on the large screen. I'm That's not just great. looking at it on, you know, 4K TV. Right. Something. And even the color is punk. I was like, yeah, this camera is. Yeah. Yeah. He was totally surprised. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your setup. I noticed you have Odysseys, I believe, and you're yeah. looking at false color. Mm -hmm. um, so you're looking at your two to three cameras at all times. The reason why I look at false color is because of how low light the camera can read, that the, the IRE is so low that you have all this information, like sub 15, like 15 oh, wow. down to like six IRE, that you can't see that, that differential on a waveform. Right, it's too tiny. False color will help you see the, you know, the contrast and levels of the light right. and what's it reading. And I can spot meter on the Odyssey and to know it's gonna hold on this camera is like, it's crazy. I could put a, you know, somebody in my skin tone or as dark as your shirt or my shirt down to like eight IRE and know I still have detail and contours in the face. Right. And I can come up just a couple of points in the LED. It's like, it's amazing, That's but amazing. you can't see that on the waveform. One other technical question I wanted to ask you is about shutter speed. Yeah. Because you change the shutter speed around. Yeah, I change shutter day. speeds in order to do like half stops and okay. full stops. And I do that, you know, one of my mentors, Don Morgan, he does stuff with shutter speeds, like elongating. It's because like at certain numbers, it's insurmountable, which you'll see. Right. You know, between like 240 down to 144. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really kind of insurmountable if you need more or less. Right. And it really kind of helps out. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. depending on exposure, the lenses operate and well, saturation will jump and whatnot if we stop down too much yeah, versus being wide open, there's a level of saturation in the stop down that. So let's talk about lenses. What's the method that you use to kind of choose lenses? Uh, always starting with story. That drives Decisions. my choice in terms of, yeah, just color temperature of lenses and performance and how sharp is it to the corner. So I'll look at stuff projected and you know, that's the only real way to see what a lens does. I've been on this kick with these super speeds lately, uh -huh. just because I love the, the color temperature of them. Yeah. And I love the flaring of them. Right. It doesn't take much for them to flare. And I've really kind of old school lenses, but the optics, when they when they work, yeah. and you shoot them at certain certain T-stops, it's a beautiful image. Right. And Maddie really got me onto it when we did straight out of Compton, that he was using like, you know, anamorphics and he was using these super speeds in conjunction with them. It depends what the story calls for. And that's where it all starts up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that, let's talk about the Sony extension block. I use it for like specialty shots if I need to get behind bookcases. Something tight. Yeah, super yeah. tight car stuff. It's absolutely amazing to use because you can make adjustments on the fly really fast. And, you know, smaller footprint. You know, it's much safer. Right. Uh, for like if an actor is driving or something like that, it's better than you know, especially if the operator has to do anything. You know, they can actually still wear a seatbelt. I love it though. You know, when everyone gets the hang of it, it's it works out to be a great tool. Lighting has changed so dramatically yeah. too in the last you know five ten years. So for me, in the last couple of years, the fact of this camera sensitivity plus the use of LEDs, I use an LED the majority of the time, except mm -hmm. for certain types of light. Yeah, there's certain things I really still love incandescent lighting right. to to do things that I don't think LED can necessarily get to just yet. Right. But it's just like any other technology, it'll get better. Yeah. But the fact remains though, it's like, I can I can ride 
and have more of a set lit by practicals, be it if they're LED, and be comfortable with the technology. It's like the camera sensitivity at the bottom end of the curve. I can fly. You know what I mean? Right. Like I can have the majority of the wide lit only by practicals and then I'll bring something in for the close up. Yeah. Really lets me do that repeatedly. I've done it so many times. Or I'll just stick up one or two LED tubes that I own and right. just accentuate with that, keep the practicals going, or just shoot the wide with no light except for what's coming through a window. In this camera, being able to handle it, it does it doesn't need that much because the curve is so long. It's not like a steep curve of exposure. Where it's so a dramatic long. change. Yeah. Right. What do you think would be advice then for people that want to, you know, either get into cinematography or maybe they want to transition from a different role to cinematography? Start off with a single image. I think a lot of great cinematographers were still photographers before. They understood lighting. What does the single image say? You know, when you look at somebody like Gordon Parks or Robert De Carava or, you know, Henry Carter Brisson, like, you know, they, these emotional impacts of a single image, if you can understand that and why certain images work, then why not, you know, then from there, you try to understand what is the storyline. Right. You know, what is the storyline? Because they were, a lot of these people are telling stories within a single right. piece of art, single moment. Yeah. There's a narrative to it a right. lot of times, you know, that these artists are trying to express of themselves. And same thing with, what is the emotional impact of when you look at Gordon Park's Harlem a series about gangs, like there's certain images that are just striking. Watch as much cinema as possible. So many ways to watch cinema these days. There's all these different outlets, like just start exploring, explore stuff out of your comfort zone. Look how people from other parts of the world are expressing themselves. Well, thank you, Vanek, so much for joining me today. Oh, no problem. Yeah, thanks everybody for watching and we look forward to seeing more thanks. work from Maddox for sure. So cool. Thank you, very much. thank you so much. It was great.